Normally in the gym, our main goal is to improve in some aspect of our physical performance. But how we go about that improvement depends very much on specifically what our goals are, whether we're training for size, whether we're training for strength, whether we're just training because we really enjoy training. So there are tons of different training principles, systems and programs, and each of these will tweak the variables in little ways, whether that means changing the number of reps, the amount of weight, the frequency, and in doing so, hopefully achieve different results. These different training programs also tend to work better for different people, so that'll depend partly on your body type and on your genetics, and also just your personal preferences for how you like to train. Several comments on this channel have asked me to address a number of specific training principles and programs. So in this video, I'm gonna look at some of the most interesting, both from your requests and also from my own experience and reading, and address just how different a training program can be. So most people starting out in the gym will either use some kind of bro split or perhaps a full body routine, maybe some kind of circuit, and they'll gradually increase the weight in order to see their performance and their strength and their size improve over time. And they'll generally do this whilst using three sets of 12 repetitions on each exercise. They might do about five to 10 different exercises in a workout, then go home, job done. But eventually you're gonna plateau, those noob gains are gonna wear off, and that's when you're gonna need something a little bit more advanced and a little bit more specifically tailored to the kind of goals that you're interested in. And that's where some of these more interesting training principles and systems come in and tweak some of those variables in order to get different results. Those variables can be all kinds of things, but generally we're looking at either increasing the intensity, increasing the volume, increasing the frequency, or altering the tempo. So when we say increasing intensity, we mean increasing the weight and the amount of effort, going past failure and all that. When we talk about increasing volume, we're talking about the number of repetitions and sets in a single workout. When we talk about frequency, we're talking about how much rest you have between workouts, whether you're training two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 times a week. And when we talk about tempo, we're talking about how quickly you move the weight during the actual exercises. So all of these different variables can be tweaked to result in different outcomes. So if you wanted to increase volume, for instance, then you might try German volume training. German volume training basically means approaching each exercise with a 10 by 10 format. So that might mean 10 sets of bench press and for each set you're going to do 10 repetitions. You'll probably start with a weight that's around your 20 rep max, meaning that you could do 20 repetitions with it on your first go, but you're going to stop at 10, hold some back in the tank, and then you're going to go again and go again and go again. So German volume training is popular with some people. I believe it's what Joe Wicks recommends with his training programs along with high intensity interval training for cardio. And it's what a lot of athletes and bodybuilders have used successfully to gain strength. But right now it's not generally considered very in vogue, it's not very popular, because you're increasing the volume, yes, but with those rests in between, I don't think you're gonna pull as much blood as you could do just by doing some kind of massive drop set, as you might do using the Joe Wider principles. Watch my video on that for more on that. And at the same time, it's still pretty intense, because if you're doing 10 times 10 at the end of those 10 uh, sets, you're gonna start failing, you're gonna start reaching failure and having to push past and etc. So you're still fatiguing your body and the point of increasing volume often is that is you're going sub-maximally so that you've got more recovery time and you can do more work and then hit the gym again and just basically increase the amount of work you're doing on the muscle so that you don't have to rest for long periods and take time out. With German volume training, you're kind of not getting the best of either world. You're not lifting anything close to your one rep max, so you're not really gaining strength, but at the same time, you're fatiguing your nervous system and to me, I don't think you're gonna pull blood as much as you could do with some other systems. So that's one method. Maybe you'd like to try it out. I will say that on the whole, if you're plateauing, switching to a different training system can be a great idea, regardless of how good that training system is. Because if you're training in one modality, when you switch, it's a shock to your system and you might find that you respond very well. And for some people, increasing volume or increasing frequency is that magic key that they need. Again, it depends on your genetics. I know some people who respond really well to volume and some people who respond really well to intensity. I respond really well to intensity and I have a friend who trains with great frequency. He trains twice a day and he ballooned since he started doing that. So again, that's what's so useful about knowing your options when it comes to how you train because it might be that switching to a different approach is all you need to unlock more gains. One method that I'm interested in for increasing volume slash frequency is double stimulation training. And this is something I used to do intuitively before I realized it had a name. 
and it basically means that you're training the same muscle group two days in a row. So let's say you have quite an intense workout on your biceps on Monday. On Tuesday, you normally would avoid the biceps. You'd probably do a pushing exercise like triceps or you might do your legs to give them time to recover because they hurt. But actually, did you know that training the same muscle group two days in a row is one of the very best ways to overcome DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. That's the pain you feel the next day. Of course, you don't wanna go really intense again because you'll cause a lot of damage and it'll take you even longer to recover. But what you can do is to train at the start of your workout, the same exercise you did the day previous, but you're gonna use lighter weights, higher rep ranges, and they call this a feeder workout. And the idea is that you're increasing protein synthesis, you're increasing blood flow to the muscle, you're providing it with nutrients, with oxygen, and you're stimulating the growth and the recovery even faster. So day one is to make it, to break it down and get it sore and give it that stimulus to increase in size and strength. Day two is to provide it with blood to swell it up and to increase protein synthesis to help it grow faster and more efficiently. Personally, this is something that I think makes a lot of intuitive sense. There's also a possibility it could improve your mind muscle connection because you can feel the muscle working more because it hurts. And like I say, it can actually help with recovery so that after that workout, the DOMS is gone or it's at least reduced. Oh, and whilst double stimulation training has more application obviously for a bodybuilder or someone interested in hypertrophy or growth, it could also be useful for someone interested in strength as a way to bring up a lagging muscle. So you don't have to use double stimulation training on every single muscle group. You can just use it on one particular muscle group that's lagging behind the rest. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you have protocols designed to increase the intensity and Mike Mentzer was one of the first people to suggest lowering the number of reps, lowering the number of sets and increasing the weight so that you're getting the same amount of stimulus from a single workout in order to trigger that growth. And then you have more rest and you hit that muscle less. But when you do hit it, you're really giving it the impetus to grow and to get stronger. Because some people will tell you that there's a certain amount of stimulus you need in order to stimulate growth. And once you go past that point, you're kind of wasting your time. Now it's a controversial topic, it's probably truer of strength than it is of size, but it's certainly again, something to mess around with and have a go with. Dorian Yates takes this to its natural extreme with his one set strategy. So the one set strategy means that you do just one set for each exercise. So instead of doing three times 10, you just do one times 10 or one times eight or one times six, that doesn't matter. The point is you're gonna put all of your effort into that one set. And by doing this, you're holding nothing back in the tank you can completely exhaust yourself for that particular movement and that will provide a lot of stimulus without wasting your time with lots of different sets and reps. And at the same time, it means in theory, you can go past your one rep max because you're putting all of your effort into a single go. So you're not saving anything in the tank. So you can try and get those PRs every single time. A slightly more mild version of this though is reverse pyramid training. And here you're just gonna put the heaviest set right at the start of your workout. So you're still gonna do multiple sets, but the first one's gonna be the heavy one instead of building up to it in the normal pyramid fashion. You might still have a warm up set just for safety, just to get those joints moving. But after that, you go straight into that heaviest set so you can aim to bust your PR when you're in a non-fatigued state. And then you have something like triphasic training by Cal Dietz and Ben Peterson. So here, you're not mixing up your frequency or intensity or your um, volume. You're mixing up instead your tempo. So that means the tempo of the actual exercises. And triphasic means you're gonna do one phase or block of eccentric exercises, one phase or block of isometric, and one of concentric. Of course, all exercises are gonna increase, include all three of those, but you're gonna emphasize on the eccentric phase, the concentric, and the isometric. So of course, the eccentric is the um, extension, the lengthening, so you're gonna slow that down and really focus on it during your first week or two weeks or three weeks. And then in the next block, you're gonna focus on the middle. So you might do pause squats, which means you're gonna stop and hold the weight. And that completely removes the elasticity. You're not bouncing up. And then on the last phase, you're gonna focus on the concentric, which is the explosive portion. So you're gonna jump up out of it, or you're just gonna focus more on it and really contract the muscle as you go through. And I've talked on this channel before about the benefits of eccentric training, for instance, which can improve your explosiveness. It can build your strength greater. I've talked about isometric training, both yielding and overcoming. And I've talked about concentric and things like starting strength. So using a triphasic program like this, you can focus on each aspect of the strength and hopefully increase things like your athletic performance, your jumping height, your running, your directional change. But at the same time, coaches like it because they can use it as a way to slow down portions of the exercise and make sure that you're using correct technique 
that you're not cheating or bouncing your way through, that your form isn't collapsing at the bottom or at the top. And again, it's just a great new stimulus. If you're used to just performing your exercises on a regular 3-1-3 cadence, just up and down, up and down, steady pace, then pausing or slowing down one part, that will greatly increase the challenge, give you something new, give you some new stimulus. And that's the main takeaway because there's loads of different training principles out there. Here are just some interesting ones that I've described, but there's many, many more. And I find it's fun and interesting to try different ones. So normally, if you're an athlete or a professional, you'd probably pick one of these, your coach would pick one for you, or they'd combine a few, and they'd create a periodized program, which would build up to your competition day, and then start again once you are back to the start of the next season. But most of us don't train like that. Most of us are just interested in being as strong and performing as well as we can all year round. And for me personally, I go to the gym because I enjoy it. So actually, I'm more interested in performance and body weight. I like to be explosive. I like to walk on my hands and things. And I'm also interested in jump height and running speed. But I train with a lot of bro split type training, a lot of drop sets and things, because that's the kind of training I enjoy. I love feeling the stimulus, which I get from intensity. And for me, the big challenge is not to increase intensity and volume to the point where I then need to recover for days and days or weeks and weeks because I've overtrained. So the point is you can mix and match these things in different ways, making sure to give yourself recovery time, but introducing all these different variables, mixing them up, seeing what works for you and changing things from now and then, but also coming up with something unique to you that involves lots of different systems to create your own program and your own protocol, your own training philosophy. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. My objective was to A, show you some of the different options out there and B, look at some particular training principles and systems that I find particularly interesting. And again, to answer some of the requests that I had in the comments. If there's anything else you'd like me to tackle, then please let me know. And I might do another video like this to go over some more different training systems in future. Stay tuned, of course, if you want more like this, as well as more fitness, bodybuilding, performance, brain training, working online, nootropics, technology, all that usual stuff. If that sounds good, then thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.